Good evening, I'm Prasad. In Malaysia, to convene a hybrid parliament sitting, you'd need a committee and a lot of time to prepare. But what about sitting to eat durians during a lockdown with no social distancing? With a crowd almost as large as the number of MPs the Prime Minister's party has in parliament. Just need some chairs and durians, I suppose. This is Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker, Rashid Hasnun. Based on his media statements in the past, it would be fair to assume he knows about the existence of the COVID-19 pandemic. It would also be fair to assume he is aware of the current lockdown announced by the PN government, which he is a part of, after he ditched PKR to join Bersatu in 2020. But that didn't stop him from sitting to feast on durians with a group almost as large as the number of MPs Bersatu has in parliament. Yesterday, he said the video showing him feasting on the prickly fruit was captured last year, before the first MCO. Unfortunately for Rashid, it's the year 2021, and Malaysians are smart. The detectives at Twitter Jaya dissected the visuals frame by frame, and many questions were raised. From the appearance of Liverpool's latest jersey to the 2021 Fariha Tudong, it all pointed to the video being taken this year. Today, Rashid finally admitted what most Malaysians already knew yesterday, that the durian feast he was caught attending took place recently, and not last year, as he previously claimed. Just like every other politician allegedly caught violating SOPs to curb the spread of COVID-19, he apologised for his mistake. He also said he would cooperate with the police who are investigating the alleged SOP violation. So why did he initially say the feast took place last year when contacted by the media yesterday? He said he made the comment about the feast happening before the first MCO because he did not have time to look at the video before commenting on it. He said he only had the chance to look at the video after an audience with the young Dipratuan Agong yesterday. In his statement today, Rashid said he had received many complaints from small farmers who had been facing difficulties since the first movement control order last year. He said in the video of him eating durians, he had visited an orchard that was facing difficulties during this current MCO. And as soon as he arrived at the orchard, soon in this instant meant immediately, the owner served them durians. He added that he ate a bit while discussing aid measures with the orchard owner. Our last story proves politicians sometimes don't do their homework and need to be kept in check. This is why Malaysia needs a free press more than ever. And being an independent media outlet can be tough. This is why we need your help to help us continue doing what we do. Click on the link in the description and find out how you can contribute. And all the awesome names you see below are all the people who helped us in May. Now moving on. This morning, newsrooms across the country received a rather shocking press release from the Prime Minister's office. Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin has been admitted to a hospital in the nation's capital after suffering from diarrhoea since yesterday. This was revealed by the Prime Minister's office through a press release issued this morning. The two-paragraph statement said the Prime Minister will be kept at the hospital for treatment and monitoring. This comes just two days after Mohidin announced a 150 billion ringgit aid package dubbed Pamule on live television. Malaysia Kini also reported that today's cabinet meeting has been postponed. In May last year, it was speculated that Mohidin had breached home quarantine to seek cancer treatment in Singapore. However, the Prime Minister's office denied this. In 2018, he underwent surgery in Singapore to treat pancreatic cancer. He addressed speculation about his health last year, saying that he was able to do his job well. The Prime Minister may be hospitalised, but Anwar Ibrahim still wants to hold him accountable. Opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim has called on Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin to resign if he refuses to heed the royal decree that Parliament should reconvene as soon as possible. Jadi, saya ingin junjung kasih bagi pihak ahli Parlement titah ya, bagi nanti Pertuan Agung dan mendesak supaya kerajaan ini lebih bertanggungjawab kalau mereka enggan kerana alasan tertentu Sewajarnya Perdana Menteri letak jawatan sekarang. Anwar said this after His Majesty reiterated that Parliament should reconvene as soon as possible, following an audience with the speakers and deputy speakers of the two houses of Parliament yesterday. The PKR president said, therefore, Dewan Rakyat Speaker Asa Azizan Harun and Muhyiddin should take steps to convene Parliament immediately. Bagi yang tidak mutabelit kenyataan dan arahan, tahu secepat mungkin berulang kali, berbulan ini menyebut secepat mungkin. 
Janganlah menteri yang agak keterlaluan kalau saya sebut ya. Angkuh, sombong, biadab nak bawa teori Ogos lah, September lah dan sebagainya. Ya. Kerana secepat mungkin bagi yang faham bahasa Melayu, segera, sesegera mungkin. Dengan mengikut garis panduan dan prosedur. Putrajaya aims to reopen parliament only during phase 3 of the National Recovery Plan. It is yet uncertain when phase 3 will come into effect. Meanwhile, Dewan Rakyat Speaker Asha Azizan Harun and Dewan Negara President Rais Yatim have said they aim to reconvene parliament by the first week of September at the latest. The Conference of Rulers will not be meeting this week because the meeting has been postponed by several months. The Conference of Rulers meeting, initially slated for tomorrow, will be postponed to October 27, according to the Office of the Keeper of the Ruler's Seal. The two-day 258th Conference of Rulers meeting was supposed to be held with Menteri Bersas and Chief Ministers on June 28, along with pre-council meetings on June 29. However, now, the Conference of Rulers meeting will be held on October 27 and 28, while the pre-council meeting will be held one day earlier. Meanwhile, the meeting with the Menteri Bersas and Chief Ministers will be held on October 25th. The Conference of Rulers last met on June 16 for a special discussion with the Yang Dipaton Agong at Istana Negara. This was after the King met with Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin and all party leaders to get their opinion on various issues regarding the nationwide emergency that is set to expire on August 1st. Shellfish, red meat and beer if you love indulging in these foods, you may end up with high uric acid level in your blood. These foods consist high level of purine, a substance that will eventually break down into uric acid and be excreted through our urine. It is recommended that the amount of dietary purines should be kept between 600 to 1000 mg per day. Having too much uric acid in your blood can cause attacks of gout. It can also cause kidney stones and blockage in the kidney. The crystallization of the excessive uric acid in your blood can be eased by reducing purine-rich food to only 100 to 150 mg daily, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and consuming urinary alkalinizer like Ural. It consists of sodium bicarbonate, citric acid, and sodium citrate that increases the urinary pH and solubility of uric acid to prevent crystallization. Best of all, it's lemon-flavored and sugar-free. Ural, effective urinary alkalinizer. Neutralize your uric acid problem now. Voters who feel betrayed by Azmin Ali will finally have their day in court. Here's more on that. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has denied International Trade and Industry Minister Azmin Ali's bid to strike out a suit against him by 10 of his parliamentary constituents. During an online proceeding earlier today, Judge Akta Tahir also did not allow an application by the 10 Gombak voters to strike out parts of Azmin's statement of defence against their suit. Azmin's counsel and Yohendra confirm the outcome of the proceedings. The Gomba MP is due for a trial on June 7 to 10, 2022. The suit was filed by 10 Gomba voters who allegedly claimed that Asmin had betrayed his promises made during the 14th general election, among them being Asmin's fiduciary duty. However, Asmin seeks to strike out the suit as he claimed it violated his fundamental rights to an associate under the federal constitution. The 10 voters are seeking to strike out parts of Asmin's statement of defence which among others cited sexual allegations against PKR President Anwar Ibrahim as a reason for defecting from the political party. Asmin, who was a former PKR Deputy President, is now a Bersatu Supreme Council member. In February last year, Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin took his party out of Pakatan Harapan. He was joined by a group of PKR defectors led by Asmin in what was later dubbed the Sheraton Move. This triggered the collapse of the Dr. Mahathir Mohamad-led Harapan administration and the establishment of the present Perikatan National Government. The plaintiffs also further alleged that Asmin had violated their trust by working with BN in the Sheraton move and causing the collapse of the Harapan government. Despite having campaigned and won the Gombak parliamentary seat on a PKR slash Harapan ticket. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. 
You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.